labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that call comes, a call to salvation. And we are to hear that call, and we are to answer that call, and we are to come to Him. Now, there are four different calls mentioned in the Bible. There's the call to salvation. I think of the man by the name of Zacchaeus. Jesus and his disciples had been walking along and they came to a city called Jericho. And there was a little crooked man in Jericho who had been cheating his fellow men. He was a tax collector. Nobody has much use for a tax collector, do they? And Jericho was the city. And as Jesus passed through, Zacchaeus had heard about Jesus. And when he heard that Jesus was coming into town, he was curious as to who this Jesus was. And so he followed the crowd out, and the crowd was lining the street, and he was a little short man. And he couldn't see over anybody's head. And I imagine that when he stood behind somebody trying to look and see who Jesus was, they would put an elbow in his face. And finally he looked about and he saw a sycamore tree growing right up over its limbs over the street. He ran over to that sycamore tree. He climbed up in that sycamore tree. He climbed out on the limb and he looked down to see who Jesus was. And Jesus stopped and looked up into that tree and said, Zacchaeus, come down, for today I must abide in thy house. Come on down, Zacchaeus. I'm going to go home with you today. And Zacchaeus came down and he said, Lord, if I've taken anything from any man, I'm willing to restore it fourfold. What had happened to Zacchaeus? The little thief had become a Christian. His ways had been changed. He was willing to give back the money that he had taken wrongfully. And that's what happens when you become a Christian. There's a change in your life. You're not the same person. You're a new man. You're a new woman in Christ. And your life changes for the better and for the good. Zacchaeus had a call. And it may be this morning that you will receive a call. You may be a church member. You may have been baptized. But maybe you've never heard that call before. And maybe today he's calling you. Calling you. And there's not only a call to salvation from sin... But there's a call to service. He calls some of us to preach the gospel. He calls everybody to serve him on one way or another. Then there's a third call. There's a call of separation. Jesus wants us separated from the world. He wants us to live for him and to turn our backs on the temptations and the blandishments of this world and be a separated people. And then in the fourth call, there's a call to come home. To come home. One of these days, He's going to call us home. For the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And we that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. He may call us Today, Jesus may come back. He said He would come back. And one of these days, He will. We don't know the day or the hour, but He will come back. He could come back today. We do not know that. So, we listen for His call. And not only that, but the call of God is unchangeable. He never changes His mind. And if God saves you and takes away your sin, He will never change your, His mind about it. He will stay true to you. The Bible says there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That friend is Jesus. 
He never gives up his people. There's nothing you can do that would cause him to stop loving you once you have received him as your Savior. So he is for us in the calling that he called us in. And then in the fifth place, he's calling, he's for us in justification. What does justification mean? Notice verse 30. And whom he called, them he also justified. Now, God can take the worst sinner in the world and save his soul and then change his life and justify him so that from that time on, God sees no fault with him, no sin in him. He completely justifies us. And that means we stand before Him justified from all things that we have ever done. You may have robbed a bank. You may have shot somebody. You may have done some very bad things. But once you receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life and into your heart, from that moment on, your slate is wiped clean. He has nothing against you. And you're saved by grace. And you're justified in His sight. And in heaven, there will be no thieves, no murderers, because they are no longer that. What they were is not what they are. God justifies us. And although the world might look upon us and say, well, I remember you when you did that or when you did something else. But God never remembers anything we ever did that was wrong because we're justified in His sight. He has cleansed us from sin. And why does He do that? He does that because His Son took our place upon the cross of Calvary. Jesus came to this earth on a mission. And that mission was to die for our sins. And when He died on the cross for our sins, He had none to die for. When He died for our sins, He covered and took away our sins forever. And we are in His sight cleansed forever. And He will one day take us home to glory. It's a wonderful thing to be able to say, my past, is all under the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. He loves me and I love Him and I'm saved by His grace and no one can charge me with a sin. That's justification. And then He's for us also in glorification. As surely as I stand here this morning, every Christian is going to be glorified. And that means that he is going to receive a new body. These old bodies of ours wear out. They give way. They don't work right. The older we get, the worse they get. We're on our way to a grave. However, there's a morning coming called the resurrection morning when he's going to raise our bodies from the grave. And our souls which are already in heaven will come back down and reunite with those bodies. And those bodies will be glorified. They will be like His glorious body. And we will be glorified with a new body. A new body that will never be sick again. A new body that will never hurt again. A new body that will never die again. One day we will have a new body and it will be a body that never is subject to death again. We'll never die again. We'll live forever with Him in that new body. That's glorification. And He's for us in giving us a new body. And then I say He's for us also in washing us. That is in cleansing us from our sin. Unto Him that loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood. When He shed His blood on the cross of Calvary, that blood was for the cleansing of our sins, to cleanse our sins away and to wash us and make us white as snow. In the bath of regeneration, 
1 John 1, 9, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. I don't care what you may have done in the past. I may not care what you have done or not done. I do not take note of any of your past. But I can tell you this, that if you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, your past is wiped out. The slate is wiped clean. God has nothing against you. Every sin you've ever committed is under the blood and washed away. And He washes you in that redeeming blood and you can sing there is a cross far, far away on a hill far, far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame. That cross is our hope of glory that Jesus paid the price to redeem us. He washed us. And then not only that, but He bought us. He's for us because He bought us. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. I don't belong to myself anymore. I was purchased on the cross by the Lord Jesus. He bought me. He paid for me with His own blood. And He saved me for His own purpose. And I belong to Him this morning. And I'm so glad that I do belong to Him. I'm so glad I don't belong to myself anymore. There was a time when I lived only to make money. There was a time when I lived only to please myself. But one night I met Jesus. And from that moment on, I have not belonged to myself. I belong to Him. And I serve Him the best I can, the best I know how. And that's by preaching the gospel, the glorious gospel of our Redeemer. We're bought with a price. For, you, for as much as you know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. And then He's for us also in robing us. He put a new robe on us. Because the Bible says we are kings and priests unto God. He regards us as kings and priests. And a king wears a robe and a crown. And we shall wear a crown someday. And we now are robed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for He hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. You see, he had to clothe us because we were naked in his sight. Our sins were showing, and God couldn't let anything like that into heaven. So he sent his son to die for us. And the righteousness of his son is imputed to the believing sinner, which makes him righteous as Jesus is righteous. Jesus lived on this earth 33 and a half years. He never did a bad thing. He never said a bad thing. He never failed to do what he should do. He had never sinned one time in his entire existence. And yet, as God and man, He came down to die for us so that we could be robed in a righteousness that man cannot provide. You see, to go to heaven when you die, you have to be perfectly righteous. 100%. That means you must never have ever committed one sin. Not one. You have to be absolutely perfect. Who among us 
could qualify. Not me. Not you. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. God demands death for sin. And we are all standing in His presence guilty. We're naked. He sees our sinfulness. And He says what you need is a robe of righteousness. And I'm going to take the righteousness of my Son and I'm going to put it on you. And I'm going to take your sin and put it on Him and He will die under the penalty of death for your sin. I'll take your sin and put it over on Him and I will take His righteousness and put it over on you. And when He does that, that means that you stand clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And the righteousness of Christ is absolute perfection. He never once ever sinned. Never did a wrong thing in His entire life. When He was being judged before Pilate, the Roman governor said, I find no fault with this man. And they cried, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! And He said, Why? What has He done? I find no fault with Him. Crucify Him! We don't want Him! Take Him out and nail Him to a cross. Let Him die the death of a felon. Let Him be crucified an ignoble death. We don't want Him! And that is what the world says today about the lovely Jesus. He who is the rose of Sharon. He who is the nail in a sure place. He is the lily of the valley. 